Well, no video today. <laughs> Video's not working. David, get on in here. Hey, all right. Talk about an intro. You know, I clicked over. This is, you know, we're going to have just real talk right now. Sometimes with live <laughs> streaming, this we are actually using this intentionally as an example. Yeah, that was a teachable moment. Through, teachable moment. This was intentional. We planned this. We're professionals. Uh, you want to make sure all of your things are working correctly. So, you know, always run through your stuff before you go live. With that being said, welcome to today's webinar. I am one of your hosts here. My name is Timothy Cross. We have David Choate with us. David, you want to tell them a little bit about Minister Brands because we do get constant questions about just yeah. kind of the scope of who we are and what Absolutely. we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Ministry Brands is a family of software companies dedicated to empowering churches, ministries, and faith-based organizations in a digital world. Uh, and kind of what that means or, or some of the reasons why that's such a big deal uh, to us is one, we've got all these different software solutions and brands that are working together, that are integrated together. Uh, and, and it's like different teams of support and, and help that can can like cross talk and make sure you get what you need. And then also behind each one of these products and software solutions are real people like Tim and I who are technology leaders, who are leaders in our churches and who are really passionate and um, really believers in the mission of the church and want to see you all succeed. So uh, it's why it's such a great thing to be here with you all today. And yeah, just exciting. Yeah. So again, our names, my name is Timothy Cross, Share Faith Media Director. If you need church media, I'm your guy. Okay. I'm the guy that hooks you up. Well, I'm not the, I'm not the guy. And I'm David, I so, and I do uh, Share Faith Kids, all of our digital uh, Sunday school lessons for Share Faith. And before we go too much further, Tim, I got to ask, um, how is your quarantine going? You, you must like this a little bit. You know, David, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being uh, we're going crazy and one being you were made for this, I'm definitely a one. You know, a <laughs> quarantine life for me, golden. Like, I got my, I got my setup. I got my computer. Now, if I didn't have internet, I would be going crazy. But what about you? Uh, I would say I'm a solid uh, four. You know, uh, my wife is uh, does all of the technology for the elementary schools in our school district. So she's slammed. I'm busy with what's going on. And we are quarantined with two identical twin teenage boys. Uh, and they're young men, which is great. So a lot of the time, uh, they, they have do their no own thing. energy. I'm sure they're super. Well, chill. but the downside of it is they are young men. So when things go wrong, man, it escalates quickly. And you're like, what in the world is going on down there? And I guess on this uh, topic of how is your quarantine going, uh, what we'd like you to do, let us know where you're viewing from. And then on a scale of one to 10, let us know how your quarantine's going. Uh, one being like Tim Cross, you were made for this. 10, I would say something like uh, one of the scenes in Jurassic Park where it's like, they've escaped. I can't contain it. They're coming for us. <laughs> I'm seriously seeing like how my children and raptors are very similar. So let us know that in the comment section. Super important. Now that we've, Super done, important. That, now that we've done that diversion, let's, let's get again, into the meat of what's again, going on Again, for today. everyone joining, we're doing daily webinars here to get you ready for your online services this Easter, because we all, as all churches across the, the world, we need to get ready for Easter online. So these daily webinars are that, and me and David on a daily basis are going to be trying to get out, get kicked out and not be welcomed back. So that's yeah. one of the examples Despite we used to Despite our best today. efforts, we're, we're still we're here. We're trying. They keep asking now, us to come back, though. But yeah, let's keep, so, well, let's keep it said, moving. Yesterday... Said, Yesterday, we had a fantastic um, webinar. We had Brandon Frazier on from Life Church Tulsa. And for me, that was that's one of those conversations where as it's unfolding, I was like, God is speaking to me uh, through this. It was so encouraging. Um, in particular, I really appreciated his perspective on trying new things in this season and being okay with failure, right? He reemphasized that point that yep. uh, fail failure is not an option. Uh, it's mandatory. Like we have to be willing to do that to move forward right now. That was fantastic. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and then we had Sean Dunstron from churchstreaming.tv, and he really got into some principles and some of the technical aspects of live streaming. Uh, so a great conversation. If, if live streaming is something like, oh, man, I wanted to hear that and I missed that, uh, our moderators can drop a link to that conversation, yesterday's webinar, uh, in the chat section. Um, and then, Tim, why don't you uh, give a little preview of what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, so uh, today we have Pastor Dave with us from, uh, from it's, where's the church? I'm, I'm, I'm Claremore. Claremore, Claremore thank Assembly. You. I was about to say a different word, so I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> I'm just going to make up a church name. It's, it's going to be a really good conversation. We're excited to have Pastor Dave with us. It's a different perspective. So yesterday we had a pastor from Life Church, which is a, a church that's been doing online for a long time. Uh, and Pastor Dave's given us a different perspective, a little bit more of a rural church, and we love it. I mean, already, just from some conversations that we've had and conversations that we know about, um, it's going to be a great perspective because it's that thing that you were sharing a little bit earlier, David, about you just got to go for it. Like failure is, is a part of it, but you kind of fail forward. And it's going to be a great conversation because they're, they're going through these we got to get our online giving up. We got to get our digital giving available. And I'm pretty sure Pastor Dave did all of that uh, for this time. Like he got all that stuff set up. And if I'm correct, he'll correct me later, but I'm pretty confident that he gave for the first time through, I think, text giving or through the online website or something like that. So it's going to be a great day to, today with that. And then later today, there is an ADF webinar, Faith in Time of Crisis. That's a super important. It's not, we're not putting it on. Uh, it, it won't, won't be this link, but it, it will, will, we should have already sent information. And if you need that, we'll drop a link in the chat, but, um, it's to kind of guide churches on how to get the grants through the, it's the care act. Yes. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I did it right today. I'm so happy and proud of myself. Tomorrow we have, uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Steady there, partner. We're also <laughs> going to have Casey Frazier on today to talk specifically about online giving. Uh, and uh, Pastor Dave is actually the father of Casey. So we've got a, a familial connection there. And so that'll be exciting. Maybe we can get, you know, some dirt and some stories out of Pastor Dave and then, you know, use those against a be later good. guest on the show. So that's what it'll be good. Thank you for, for uh, throwing that in there, David. You did a great job. You know, uh, I, I should I read can. my notes a little bit better next time. Why do I uh, even write these? What's the point? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, tomorrow we have a great uh, webinar planned. We're going to have a focus on updating your website and mobile app for online Easter, just getting your church ready for that. And then we'll be taking a break over the weekend. We'll be coming back Monday with a very exciting webinar focused exclusively on getting your kids ministry online. And that's going to be a huge part of it. We all know that the kids ministry for churches is a huge part of the church. Uh, kids and youth. I mean, they're the next generation and trying to engage them during this time is going to be huge. So that's going to be a great conversation. And you definitely don't want to miss that. Yeah, so. really excited about that one. So uh, if you're involved in kids ministry, or you have people that you know, maybe that aren't here today that are involved in kids ministry, that's going to be a must watch. So be sure and let them know about this. Uh, go ahead and forward your invites or, or share them on social media. Just make sure that they're there because it's going to be a great conversation. And we'll, we'll just share a lot of the, the resources that are available for free right now and also some perspectives that different churches um, are, are employing right now that are really working. So that's good. Now, last thing before we get started, um, first, Ministry Brands has uh, – Oh, that wasn't the slide I was expecting, but we will do questions. <laughs> I need to read my notes. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, in particular today about giving or anything else that you hear mentioned, please uh, send us a message at careteam at ministrybrands.com. Uh, we have been getting so many of those in and answering them uh, just as quick as we can and getting you the info you need. And then finally, uh, we have a site with a ton of resources right now for Easter online and ministry online in general. And that is info.ministrybrands.com uh, slash ministry online. If you're like me and there's no way you could remember that, uh, we will have uh, our moderators go ahead and drop that in the discussion section. And uh, you can go ahead and check that out at your yeah. leisure. It is going to be good. And it's a great resource. All right, All well, right. enough of that. Yeah, let's let's, let's get, get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. I would I would classify this the steak, the good the part. steak. Yeah, it's the good part. 
Yeah. Casey's the good part too. I mean, that conversation is going to be good, but let's, anyways, let's, let's, let's introduce our guest. We're so Pastor, excited to yes. have him here today. Pastor Dave. Boom. Hey, Pastor how's it going? Dave, welcome. Hey guys. <laughs> Appreciate you allowing me uh, to, to waste your time today. <laughs> oh, don't I, worry about it. We can no, waste our time got, on our you own. You got that backwards. <laughs> We're wasting your time. <laughs> I heard it was take your grandpa to work day. Hey, all right. I like this guy. Now, are you are you a Pastor Dave, Pastor David preference? I'm Pastor Dave. Yeah. Okay. That's it. I, well, maybe as we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, the church you pastor? Okay. Hey, um, we are in a little community called Claremore. It's right outside of Tulsa, about 25 miles. So we're more rural than we are, you know, metro, uh, but that influence is going that way. Uh, so we, we have struggled. We have about 60 trains that come through our town every day. Just, we're not, we're not, you know, gun smoke, but at the same time, we're rural. So there we are. And, um, but it's a, it's a growing community big time. I've been there for 17 years, believe it or not. Wow. And uh, we have a church of almost 300. So, um, you know, we're growing, uh, have a lot of fun uh, until now. <laughs> yeah, we're, now we're looking at the toolbox, figuring out which, which tool to pull out and how to make it happen. So, yeah, so that, I think that's uh, a thought that we're all really curious about is prior to everything going on with COVID-19 and quarantines and all that stuff, what did technology look like in your church? You know, was, in terms of like website or giving or any yeah. of it, was it there? No, not at all. Matter of fact, you know, 17 years ago when I went there, I mean, everybody was coat and tie, you know, very formal. I mean, you know, it was appropriate for that time. Uh, we've definitely, you know, relaxed the standards there. I, I'm in a shirt like this today because I did an online funeral today. I mean, oh, wow. it's, a, it's a world of first. I'm out there yeah. at the graveside. We're doing this thing online. It is crazy. So um, uh, that's that's a lot, a lot of history there, but we've changed over the 17 years. And, and technically, uh, the very first day that I got there, uh, I would, when we would take up the offering, I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but I would take my check, walk it down the stairs and put it in the offering bag because I felt like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of the father figure. I'm the leader. You know, I, I need to set the example. And mm -hmm. back then, of course, there was no online giving or anything like that. So I did that. I still do that till today, until today. <laughs> you know, <that> was, <laughs> we've had to change. Um, but I, I never had to, uh, I had to, never had to try to introduce anything else. We have a youth pastor named John Stan, who's just an incredible IT guy. So about probably five years ago, we started uh, introducing online giving, but it was very minimal. I started realizing that a lot of our younger couples don't even have checking accounts and that type of thing. So we need to That's really me, address Pastor that. That's me, Pastor Dave. That's me. Yeah. Someone asked well, me for a check. I'm like, what's a check? I don't, I don't even remember how to sign. The only thing I sign checks for these days are the checks I sign and send to the IRS. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Like, how well, do I sign a check again? I got to Google this. <laughs> oh, no kidding. Well, that's where we were. And so, but we never really promoted it, never needed to or had to, uh, you know. So now uh, we have a lot of our older people uh, that really need uh, to, to be a part of that. So technologically, I mean, we're pretty sound. We've, we've really upgraded uh, the looks of our sanctuary. Uh, we're in a, a traditional church, so we're always going to be a traditional church. But, you know, as far as digital lighting, the cameras, uh, or not the camera, but, you know, projection and that type of thing, you know, we've really upgraded that. But when it comes to giving and communication and streaming and all of that, we haven't done any of that until now. So what is that? Maybe talk us through the process of what that was like for you then, uh, giving for the first time online and talking to your congregation about that and, and trying to kind of shepherd a group of people uh, into a new place, you know, this, yeah. this technological space. Well, it was uh, definitely fish out of water type thing, you know, uh, because I'd never done it, but I never had to. So now's a kind of a, a great thing that has happened. I, I've, I've had to, but um, I really, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't have to have to have to, but I decided I needed there again to be the example. If I was going to step in 17 years ago and start paying, a, you know, my tithes visibly to where people could see it, then I felt like they needed to be a part of, of me transitioning over to an opportunity to do something like that. So you know, I talk about it um, with a lot of, quite honestly, with, with Casey's help, kind of stirring through that because I never did that. Our youth pastor took care of a lot of those things, guided people through, 
Uh, mm -hmm. People could call and they would talk to him about how to get involved. But most of it was younger ones. But now, uh, just talking to um, one of our financial officers today, and uh, we've had an uptick, obviously, with the online giving. Uh, there was a lady that called this this morning. Know where she's about my age. She said, hey, we need to figure out how to do it. So our secretary was was walking her through that whole process. But me as well. I wasn't afraid of it. Just didn't have to. But at the same time, was. You know, I didn't want to have to get into all of that stuff. It was an unknown. So yeah. I think the more that we as older people, younger people, you name it, just make it a process that's very simple. But hey, I'll be honest with you, people my age, they need to really feel like it's safe and secure and that they can do this. They're not worried about where it goes because we live in yeah. a world where your information goes everywhere. Every other commercial is kind of a question, telemarketing, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So um, being able to walk through that and, and encourage them to do so was what, quite honestly was exciting and to hear the ones that are. And then I think I thought it was funny. We have a guy who's in his eighties. Uh, he's kind of the, uh, he, he's on call for the funeral home. You know, he works there. That's where he used to work. And he comes in the other day and, and he's, he's been giving online for a long time. And I'm going, <laughs> what? You know, it's crazy. <laughs> so we, um, uh, technologically, we, we didn't have to, but now we, we have been doing it for about five years, but now the necessity is really, really there. And, and the interest is there as well. It's just a learning curve. And thank God it's a lot easier than I ever dreamed. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that uh, in a, l a little bit more. Like how, what would you, what would you do to share, or, or I guess, how would you share to everyone watching right now, encouragement to kind of walk that through with their members? Like, I love that you had your secretary trained and knowledgeable on how to help people to kind of give online or, or do that digital giving, whether it be through text giving or through the website or whatever it might be. Um, how would you go about shepherding, I guess would be a good word, uh, your congregation and giving advice to that for everyone watching right now. It's like, how would you go about doing that? Because I'm sure that had to be awkward uh, to have that conversation. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing is just being transparent and saying, Hey, I've never done this before. So it was something that, that I, I kind of, I don't think I was apprehensive only because I didn't want to have to create another learning curve in my life, but I had to just kind of get rid of all the background noise of all the other things that are going on, especially for an older person like me uh, that has never had to do a whole lot of that stuff. Uh, but the truth of the matter is if I'm the pastor, people trust me. And if they trust me saying it's going to be an easy thing, um, most everybody has already gone through pretty much that process, whether it's purchasing something, you know, you get in the, the credit card information or the bank routing number, all of those things. So that's not the scary part. It's just the, hey, go ahead and do it. Uh, you'll like it. This isn't about we're trying to do it a different way. You do it any way you want to. But now that uh, pretty much attendance has been eliminated, and the personal part of that's been eliminated, then, you know, feel free to do it. And then I just kind of explained to them how easy it was. And yeah. some of it was a little bit of education on our website, making sure they knew where to go to that. But, and but you, uh, you made a video, right? Uh, for your congregation? <laughs> yeah, I heard yeah. about this video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was real easy. I mean, I was embarrassed that it was that easy, <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> because I guess I, I probably like a lot of pastors. You know what? I just want to shepherd that's a preacher word, you know, pastor word. Yeah, I just want to take care of you. I tell our people all the time in Sundays and our leadership meetings. And I said, listen, you guys do your stuff so I can just do hospital visits. I still love hospital visits. That's eliminated. You know, I love to go see people who are shut in or whatever. I want to pastor the church. You guys run the church. You now that's, I'm going to do responsibility. Don't get me wrong, but that's what I wanted, wanted to do. But now I'm having to lead into this separate area. And it was, it was liberating. It really was. Uh, it, how easy it was was just amazing. And it was fun. Um, I won't, probably won't do it all the time. But, but it was great to go through that process and see just how easy it was. And, and um, yeah, I think how effective I think it feels. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's, I think that's yeah. great that you, that you went about doing that. In fact, you said something I think is super key is that people that your, your church trusts the senior pastor and there's so much value mm -hmm. in you as the leader of the church sitting down, taking the time to create a video like that and just kind of address the concerns that not, not only the, it, that all demographics have, it's like, is this safe? Is this secure? 
because we do live, like you said, in that world where there's, there's constantly, you know, people yeah. trying to get after our information, which it's super important yeah. to make sure that you emphasize that. I think that safe, that this is a safe and secure way to give to the church. Hey, Timothy, let me add one word, you know, safe and secure. Let me add sacred because, you know, people, especially my age, you know, giving the offering is, is a powerful thing. I mean, it's, it's not just, I think I got to do this or what is 10%. It's it, man, this is a reflection of our, our commitment to the Lord. It's a reflection of our Christianity. So when you put in the dynamic to where, you know, when I write a check, I'm doing a sacred thing. You know, I, I, this is, this is really special to me. This is my heart. This is my life. This is what I pray about. So to do it online, sometimes you feel like I'm just doing a technical thing, if you would. To, so to reinforce that, I think, has been probably one of the biggest things that, you know, in private conversations to let somebody know, hey, this is just another medium of doing exactly what the Lord's laid on your heart in the first place. That is a good word. I love that. Uh, that, that Pastor Dave, bring it yeah. in. See, I knew it would well, be good to get Pastor Dave on here. Whose idea yeah. was this? Well, before the ball, every now and <laughs> before, before uh, we let you go, I think we got time for one more question. And maybe just to pivot a little bit from giving, um, what, what advice would you just have for pastors in general right now in, in this season of, you know, social distancing and quarantine and, and, and all of this as you've kind of, you know, gone through this, um, what are your areas of focus right now with your, with your congregation and, and yeah. just reaching out and taking care of people? Well, I think, uh, I think every pastor has a heart and they all do somewhere in there. They all do. There's a lot of concerns that they have is the disconnect from the people. And you can do that in a lot of different ways, but it's not the same thing as just being right there. So now trying to create that connection is, is quite challenging. Um, I brought a couple of things that we did immediately um, that we had some yard signs. I'm going to do this. We made up these yard signs and we just <laughs> slapped the name on there. And there's our, I love it. our logo on the back. So everybody who we know is kind of, con you know, like a single uh, widow, whatever we go, we can't go in, but we plant that in the front yard, call them. They look through the window, weep. you know, it's, it's a, cool, it's a cool moment. We've done this a lot of our nursing homes. Um, the other thing is, is we really uh, picked up the snail mail, believe it or not, it's still there. And uh, you know, every one of our staff members are directed every day to write five letters and make five phone calls. And uh, it's, it's the other thing. You can cover that easily with text and stuff like that. But man, now these people love to find something in their mailbox. They love for their phone to ring for, the, for you know, someone just making contact. And then I think the biggest thing that, that as pastors is find a way to reach out to your community, which is kind of difficult. You're, you're having a hard time just reaching out to your, to your people. But we decided we wanted to do three things. Number one, what we did, everything we do needs to be doable. You know, we can do this. You know, a lot of things that have been taken away from us that we can't do anymore. We can't meet in congregations and that type of thing. But to do the things that are doable, like the mail and the phone calling, and do the things that we can maintain. I don't want to be a one-shot thing and they hear from us four weeks from now. You know, every week, if not, you know, something like that. So, as you know, you're, you're, you're the children guru guy. You know, there's a lot of things you're doing, connecting with kids online, that type of thing. But the other thing is what needed to be a spiritual directive. So one thing that led us, and, and I'll, you know, leave you guys alone after this. But No, this is good, decided, Pastor Dave. This is good. Yeah, well, we decided, you know, there's people in our community, even though we're not New York or California, but there's people that are being laid off. So we identified uh, this one restaurant, had to lay off 20 people. It was us calling and asking. So uh, just last night, um, we took 40 meals, I mean, 20 meals together. Um, it was barbecue beef and all this other stuff. Put them in a bag, took them over to this place. They're going to distribute to those, uh, to those people that have been laid off. And it's not going to rescue them financially, but it's just letting them know that there's a church in town, people that just care about the circumstance that they're going in because they're being disconnected, but also physically and financially affected by this. So and here's the amazing thing that we thought we were just going to drop off the meals and say, hey, God bless you. Here we are. We couldn't get away from that. The, they just, the manager that's there, the owner of the place just, just wanted to talk. And I thought, you know, this is so cool. Everybody just needs to tell their story. So, you know, uh, my story with online giving, my story with still being a pastor, my story with caring about Claremore America, my story about caring for our own people. Everybody's got a story. And man, if you embrace that story, God will fill in all the blanks and God will take care of the church and God will give us ways to, to give and support and that type of thing. So 
I it's appreciate good. you guys letting me be on today. No, that oh, was man. great. Thank you. Pastor Dave, uh, I don't care what your daughter says about you. I really think you were a good <laughs> guest to have on here. So yeah, I just, hey. just for me, for my two cents anyway. Dude, my phone number is 918-706-5499. <laughs> you can call me and we'll talk about Casey. <laughs> <laughs> done. It's just not a made up number. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so yeah. much. All right. Goodbye. All right. Well, uh, we do want to transition now into a more kind of in depth discussion. Kind of like what we did giving. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Some more. So we gave you some. Big picture thoughts. Uh, thank you again, Pastor Dave, just with some of that. Some of the things that really stuck out to me was uh, what he was saying about this is a sacred act of worship. Like, so good. And the church uh, needs to hear that um, from, the, yeah. from the leader of the church. So with that being said, though, uh, uh, we're going to kind of take it into more in that technical space. Yeah, let me just give a real quick uh, intro here uh, on giving, and then we'll bring Casey in. And these are some thoughts she wanted me to share. Uh, one, right now, giving... It really is the only option. And so, like Dave said, it's something that we as churches need to lead into. Uh, two, being willing to give clear instructions on it. Three, uh, transparency. And Dave brought that up, making known what the needs are. Um, four, sharing the needs, not just maybe the specific needs of your church, but there might be larger needs within your body. Uh, like he said, people that have been laid off or bigger things in the community, make those known and give people the opportunity to give to that. And then I think one of the best things I heard in that, that interview is being willing to lead by example. And so it, it was just great to hear that story of someone who's like, yeah, I know I've never done it and I'm figuring it out, but I'm going to be the first one in and, and share what I've learned with you all. And that's fantastic. So yeah. uh, let's bring the expert in now. Uh, Casey, why don't you jump on in and join us? Hey, guys. Hey. How's it going? Oh, it's how's it, going. How's it going, Pastor Dave's daughter? Well, I, I loved hearing all of those wonderful things said about me. That was great. <laughs> You know, Love he told it. us he was going to tell us some stories, but we told him I, not Yeah, I to. didn't feel like we got the dirt we were looking for, but yeah. that's all right. That's all right. Well, we're having family dinner tonight, less than 10 people, of course. So I'll be sure to record that and send it over later. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to jump out of here and uh, let you lead this, Casey. And, and Tim, I think you're running the slides. Yep. All right, Casey, it is all you. Awesome. Thank you. So we did not compare notes, uh, but dad, Pastor Dave kind of hit on so many of these great things and it, and it really is so simple. So talking about remaining generous, um, I think some of the recurring themes that we've tried to really encourage everyone who's joined these webinars is to remember that, you know, we're not stopping church. We're just having to do it differently. So giving is the exact same. Um, it's been there. It's always been there. I, I love dad stole one of our favorite lines is that generosity is, is a sacred act of worship. Giving is part of our worship as much as showing up as singing praise and worship. Giving is part of our worship experience. So we don't want to take that away. We just have to provide new avenues for it. Um, so we do have a few things. Um, Tim, I don't know if we can share. Are we still sharing the slides? It's hard for me to see. I'm sorry. Um, perfect. Okay, so these are the, the things we're going to talk about. Um, so we can, we can actually move on to the next slide and talk about um, really how digital giving is right now our primary, if not our only option. So kind of embracing that. We've, we've really kind of encouraged all the churches and organizations that we serve hey, we're not trying to take away everyone's checkbook or everyone's cash. We just wanna make sure that everyone in your congregation has a method to give. And then unexpectedly, here we are where that's not true, where digitally is often the only way for everyone to give, even the faithful check writers and the cash givers. So suddenly this is our only option. So we kind of just have to get on board. We have to embrace it, um, but not take it away. And kind of like, like dad's church, they had online, but didn't really push it, didn't super promote it. If you wanted to use it, great. But if you wanted to use other ways, great. So what we call launch or in many cases, relaunching digital giving, almost like it's brand new because to a lot of your congregation, it might be brand new. So almost treating this like a, 
hey, here we are. We are in a digital world and we are going to launch or relaunch digital giving. And then kind of moving on to the next slide, how do we do that? What does that actually mean? And that means providing really, really clear instruction. So I, I wanna say this with kindness and love and appreciation to all the pastors watching, telling your congregation, just go to our website is not good enough. You have to now think, because you're, you're speaking to a screen in many cases. So who is watching behind that screen and do they have any idea what go to our website means? Do they know your website? Is it printed? If you're doing live stream, are you using um, on-screen graphics? Are you posting in the comments? Are your moderators providing that link to make this as easy as possible for people to follow your instructions? So then let's say that they do find your website, then what? You know, if I want to go to a website that I'm, I may not be familiar with in the first place, what do I do once I get there? So providing really, really clear directional language for all of your online and text mobile app, any way that you can give electronically, providing really, really clear and directional language right now is key. And exactly what we talked about earlier, hearing that from your pastor, that's your trusted source of information. So, so your message, you telling your congregation how to do these things, literally how to do them is what we need to do right now. Um, so Tim, can you share, um, we have a really great example of a church website. Um, I just want to brag on, on this church because they are nailing it. Um, if I were the pastor, if I were live streaming, I would say, go to our church website, provide this link. Then I would say in the top right corner, you will see give online, click that link. And this is what I, I don't, I don't want to go too quickly. That link did not take us directly to an online giving portal. It brought us here to this perfect landing page, telling the congregation why we give, connecting to our mission, then scrolling down a little bit, three totally different ways to give online mobile app and text providing instructions for each one of these then down below our frequently asked questions this is the best place to hey is this secure yes here is the banking compliance that our digital giving provider meets um, how to contact our office any question that someone might have about this you I, I love having a trained staff person to be able to answer a phone call but in theory your giving landing page could be a one-stop shop. And this one I, I absolutely love. So going back a little bit, I'm the pastor, I'm the communicator, I'm talking on live stream. I provide directional vocabulary in the top right corner, click give online. Here's what to expect next. Scroll down a little bit and you've got three methods to give and then walking your congregation through these steps. This one, is like gold star for me. Um, I need to call them and send them a gift card or something like this. I wish every single church had a giving landing page like this. Um, so we can go back if we want to to the presentation, but providing clear and directional vocabulary is now more important than ever. Again, we, we kind of have to think about the demographic that we are now um, needing to maybe hold their hands a little bit more through digital options. Typically, and this is a broad statement, but typically our younger generations are a little bit more comfortable. They'll poke around, they'll find it. But the type of demographic that isn't used to going to your website, they're used to seeing their pastor on stage in person and writing their check, even going to their website is new. So being um, incredibly intentional with our vocabulary and directional language is just really now more important than ever. Um, okay, so, Things like clear and consistent communication. Um, these are, we have free templates that you can download just like this, where you can actually type in your church's giving number. Um, if you're a little unfamiliar yourself, there are templates like these, make them your own, but provide examples and step-by-step -step instructions. Our website has free videos that you can download, post on your website that very literally step-by-step -step show anyone of any age, how to give online, how to give with a text message, how to give with a mobile app. And we make all of that available for free. So you can just download those videos, post them on your beautiful giving landing page on your website, send them out on an e-blast, use your social media. Um, 
in dad's video. He literally printed that slide and held it up on a piece of paper so that people could read it right off of the screen. Because um, I, I asked him, I was like, well, how do you communicate on the weekends? He said, well, it's on a slide behind me in the auditorium. I said, well, you don't have a slide. You're not in the auditorium. So what could you do? Well, I could print a piece of paper. Yes, you can. Like, it does not have to be high tech to still communicate really, really clearly. So use good examples, use visual aids, um, and repeat that message over and over so people can find that number, find your website, and feel comfortable giving. So moving on, um, we talked jump about this earlier, so I don't mean to be redundant, but um, in times of crisis, it is um, easy to shy away from talking about giving. It's easy to tell ourselves, you know, people are hurting. We don't want to appear needy or we don't want to appear greedy. We don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. We don't have to do those things to still be transparent about the needs of our church because as we talked about, church is still happening just differently. So the church still has needs. The church still has outreach ministries. The church is oftentimes still supporting food banks and things like transportation services. So there are still some fixed costs to do church. So reminding our congregations what those partnerships are and how those places need us now more than ever is, is great. Lean into that. So remind your congregation why you specifically give who you partner with, the good that you are doing in your community. And then also we can move on to the next one as well. Um, we, we did talk about this earlier, but relief within our congregations or within our communities, we don't want to, um, we don't want to shy away from the fact that our church members are also financially hurting. A lot of people are losing their incomes and are, are very fearful and have some very specific benevolent needs to be met. So using digital giving, um, not relying on it, but leveraging digital giving opportunities, we can create relief funds and outreach efforts where people who can and do have the margin to be generous can give specifically to those missions right now to help meet the needs of their own congregation. Um, so all of these are methods, but again, clearly communicating to our congregation, hey, we've made these things available here's how to find them and here's how easy it is always going back to the safety and security um in times of crisis fraud goes crazy high right so we need to actually address those things we know that that's a possibility but here's what we have in place to keep your generosity safe here are the missions we're supporting here are our outreach efforts here's how to do that and then lastly, again, I mean, he, he stole all my thunder, but leading by example, um, I love this. How can we as leaders, as pastors, ask anyone in our congregation to do something that we haven't already? Um, it may not be your permanent method. You may not love giving online forever and ever, but having the ability to say, I've done it myself. It was easier than I thought. I felt safe. I felt secure. I was able to follow those instructions as a pastoral leader leading by example is the absolute best way, especially in a time of crisis when there are so many questions. Um, so in, in grand summary, we do have some great, great examples of clear communication. We have tons of free resources to help you communicate the logistics of giving. And we're also providing, if you don't have it, we're providing um, free digital giving in support of your ministry during this crisis. So text giving, um, our mobile app. We're just giving it away to help meet that need if you don't already have it. Hey, Casey. Um, I was wondering, one of the, the questions that I saw on the panel, and I don't know that I'm all the way clear on it either, is when we talk about the difference between online and text giving, um, what, what do we mean by that? Or, or how, how do those work differently? Or what does that look like? That's a, a great question. And I, I, I was just um, at a conference in Texas right before all this happened and um, had a slightly older woman in one of our workshops say, I'm going to be really honest. I'm a little embarrassed. I don't understand how text giving works. I don't have my bank account saved in my cell phone. How does that actually work? And that's not a, that's not a bad question. If you don't know, you don't know, and that's okay. So actually explaining how text giving works, I think is, is brilliant. So with us, 
you are initiating a gift with a text message. So um, every church that we serve has a dedicated number. You're not necessarily sharing that, a, a traditional 10 digit number. And for us, you can just simply send a dollar amount or the word give, like that's the body of your text message. And you hit send in response, you will get a text back to you with a link. And that basically opens the web browser on your smartphone, almost just like online giving, but it just happens to be a much smaller computer, right? It's just your handheld. So from there, just like online shopping, you enter your, your name, the fund you want to give to your payment method, and then click submit. Then if you're returning to text giving, you've done that one time, the second time you are recognized because you've already kind of gone through that registration process. So the second time you can simply text the dollar amount or potentially a keyword like a fund. So I could text 100 tithe, send that text message. My gift is complete. It is that easy because I've already done it once. So the first time you get a link back you click the link, you open your web browser, you complete a, a simple form, the returning time, you never even have to leave the text message feature. Do you find that, that more and more churches are going that route or is it still kind of a balance between, you know, doing, you know, texting you're getting or going to the church's website and doing it that way? That's a great question. I would say online is probably more, uh, it's just more natural. I think we're used to, especially with Amazon and online shopping, that's so natural for us. Texting is still a little bit strange, but statistically, uh, if anybody is like a communications person on here, you know the open rates of emails are, are pretty low. <laughs> um, open rate and even read rates of text messages are 98 to 99%. Like if I got a text message right now, I would probably be inclined to look down and, just, and open it and probably read it. So the way that we use text messages to communicate is close to 100% of our communication. So back to leaning into our pastors to communicate, this is a thing and it's an easy thing and it's a safe thing. Here's how it works. Showing those really simple one minute videos here's literally how to use a text message to give to our church. It links to your online giving. It's the same account. It's just choosing, did I start with a text or did I start on a website? You end up at the same place. You yeah. just kind of chose a different vehicle to get to the same destination. Yeah. It, it could be cool to kind of create videos and spread those videos out when you release them. And I know on like the iPhone, I'm sure you can do it on Android. You can even record your screen kind of show from your phone how to do like text giving for example or giving online on your website even through your mobile phone so i like that that's good so we have all of those videos uh for free on our website you can use them steal them borrow them or use them as an example and recreate them with your own numbers your own pastors it is really really easy to do it and again if you haven't done it how can you expect or ask your congregation to do it as well now that website you're referring to, because I, I know we're going to get questions on that. That's specifically which one? Yep. That's on our giving help desk. It is. I saw somebody posted it in the chat. We'll be sure to post it on our resources that we listed, but that's our giving help desk. Um, so that is, I see it over in the chat. It's giving help desk. There you go. So if you scroll down to those video tutorials, those lovely ladies are some high level how to's. And then if you scroll down, there are some, slightly more um, expanded user versions of a cell phone. So guide to text giving, guide to mobile app and guide to online. This shows you quite literally as someone holding a phone, here's exactly what your phone's going to look oh, like. Those are fantastic. That's awesome. Oh, I <laughs> look at that. Beautiful. Woo! Come Post on. My... So you can use, post them on your website or recreate them on your own. Another question that came in and I think you, you answered it for giving, um, I know like for me, sometimes it's like, okay, are they the same? Are they different with giving or online? So when I give through text, uh, I do it one time through the website and then I never have to go through that process again. What about if I give online? Is it the same kind of principle that I can just fill out the information on the form one time or do I got to like refill out a form every time I give online? We kind of have the choice to be honest. And, um, it was right there on the screen, but you can choose to sign in and create an account to where all of your information would be saved. 
You can also choose to do a recurring gift, which is what I do. So the, the first and the 15th of every single month, whether I am physically in my church or not, my tithe and my offering come right out of my bank account because I set it up the very first time, clicked make this gift recurring, picked my frequency, it is done. So I am being continuously faithful, whether my body made it into the building, I might be sick or on vacation or my kid's a gymnast. We are at gymnastics meets on Sundays, but I can still be faithful. So you can give as a, as a guest giver by just completing the form, or you could sign in and save yourself a lot of clicks um, and a lot of typing <laughs> by being a return recognized giver. So you can sign in. Um, ours is really cool. You can sign in with a text message. So if you don't want to do an email and a password, which I will never remember any of my passwords, you can get a secure text pin, um, which I love that. So if I'm a text cool. giver, when I get a text pin, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Another question I'm seeing uh, come in, and I think it's it's like a concern of ours, is like when we give, um, is there a, a fee associated with it, right? And I think part of that is like, is everything I'm giving going to the church or how does that transaction work? So maybe you can That's speak into that a little bit. A great question. I love that. Um, so yes, there is a fee. Digital giving is not free. Um, what we are providing, we are not charging a monthly service fee to have the feature. But when someone gives to your organization, a small processing fee does apply. Um, realistically, as consumers, every time we swipe a card, there's a fee associated. It just may be kind of lumped into the cost of our milk, right? We may not actually see it as the consumer. Um, on the church side, yes, every time someone gives a small percentage, on average, that's about two, two and a half percent. Sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little bit higher, but somewhere in the two and a half percent range for debit and credit cards and then bank giving or um, e-check ACH is quite a bit lower. It's usually 1% or less, but that is withheld from the gift amount. So when I give my $100 tithe, there is a small fee. Um, our software, and I know a lot of others do, but they allow the opportunity for givers to help absorb that cost. Um, so on that screenshot, and it's, we showed it in our videos, um, the giver can say, yes, I would love to help and cover this cost by adding 2%, 2.5%. And for us, the church is in control of what they set that percentage to be. Then my total goes up a little bit, and that processing fee still applies, but to the new higher total. So my church receives the remaining balance, which is closer to what it would be as if there were not a fee. So Very I can cool. help with that. Like yeah. add a tip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm seeing another good question here uh, from the from Susan, actually. She says, or she's asking, some people are still very concerned about their credit card information being stored. Mm -hmm. How do we quell those fears? Now, I know the Pastor Dave was even talking about safe and secure are very important for people. So do you have any input on that? Absolutely. So whatever your digital giving provider is, you need to ask that and know it, have it saved so that when your congregation asks you, you can say, yes, I do know the security compliance. Um, with us, we are a level one PCI compliant provider, uh, 256 AES encryption, words that I don't really know what they mean, but I know that they are bank Very level. secure, apparently, Very that's safe. what that means. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna throw out some words here and you're just gonna yeah. accept them. You convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> what I know is that what that translates to is bank level security. Um, so our team can always provide you exactly what that verbiage is. That website we, were, we showed earlier on the FAQs, I would love for every church to have a link that says, is this secure or what security is in place and provide that so that we can go back and actually um, give our givers confidence. Um, we talk a lot about removing the barriers of generosity. And if concern over safety is a barrier to someone's giving, what can we do to remove that? Well, we can provide you our security blurbs. So um, I love that thing. It's a fantastic question. We are a compliant service provider, so we can provide you all that language. I would encourage you copy paste it, put it on your website, or at least know where to find it when someone asks and they should ask. We're just gonna keep peppering you with questions here because you're doing so <laughs> fantastic. Uh, we got a question here from Stephanie and she asked, what is the app? I remember seeing like, uh, okay, you can give to text, you can give online, and then there was an option of give to your church app. So what, what are we talking about there? Yep, I'm talking about our church app, of course, which is uh, Ministry One. 
So Ministry One is our mobile app. We've talked a lot about how Ministry Brands is a family of different technology solutions that all integrate well together. Our mobile app connects to our giving platform. So your giving platform connects to the app. So if I've got my, my, you know, my phone, I can open the Ministry One mobile app and I, I can open it for you. And from there I can give, I can register for events. I can watch live streaming when it's integrated with churchstreaming.tv. I can listen to podcasts. I can submit prayer requests. Um, if my church uses our integrated church management software, I can access my church directory and check my kids in. Um, so the app that I'm referring to is Ministry One. There are, of course, others, and we love them. I'm a little bit partial just because it connects everything so well when you have all these integrated solutions. So we'll, I'm, we'll be sure to provide that. And it is on that info page, what the Ministry One app is and what it provides. And it's awesome. so simple. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, I think I'm not seeing any more uh, questions come in there. Really appreciate you staying on after your uh, presentation. I know we've got some of the people that have written in that are saying specifically uh, thank you uh, for, for answering their questions. Um, fantastic job. Your, your whole family. Wow. Just <laughs> Family of powerhouses over there. I know. Who else can we schedule to come on here and talk <laughs> with us? <laughs> Well, my, my mom is it, as a clinician, so I think that uh, she can oh, talk to you about therapy and all those things. But there you go. <laughs> it just isn't fair at some point. You're right. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Casey. I want to give real quick before we jump out here, Tim, uh, an overview again of where we're going. Yep, so sounds good. Uh, tomorrow, we uh, we're going to focus on getting your church website and your mobile app uh, up and running for Easter. So that's going to be an important conversation. Um, we'll get into the technical side of that. We'll have a communication or a conversation with a pastor who really specializes on online community. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Monday, jumping in and talking kids ministry. Um, I personally am excited for that. I've been waiting for this it. Is at the bit. This is what he's been planning the whole the time. The only reason I got in on this. Come back on Monday. Yeah. Right. Um, Tuesday, we're going to be talking about communication and, and engagement, um, or I'm sorry, uh, communication and announcements and, and really like, okay, how do we start letting our, our members know Easter's coming and really getting that on their radar and communicating that well. Wednesday is an interesting conversation uh, that we've just slated in. We're going to be talking about online security. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of you may have seen some of the stuff going on with Zoom and how this new technology also presents some new security challenges. And so we've got uh, some of the people from Protect My Ministry that will be coming on and talking security with us. Very excited yeah. for that. And then Thursday, our final webinar uh, in this series, we'll be doing a bit of a, a pregame rally, talking <laughs> through some of the big uh, last uh, perspectives and ideas, encouragement, getting some feedback from, from you all, uh, having some poll questions, just a lot of interactive stuff on that last day. We're excited. It's going to be a good, good uh, couple series here for sure. And uh, just definitely come back every day. It's at 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Central time is what I was about to say. That's for me. That's where I'm in. I'm in the central. I'm Pacific. Come on. Uh, yeah. So as always, Tim, so glad you got to hang out with me today. And, uh, you know, sure David, it was, a privilege. Uh, it was an absolute privilege, my friend. Uh, and on that note, everyone, we're going to, we're going to keep the webinar up for just a little bit longer. So if you do have questions again, use that Q and a feature, we will get to them and join us again tomorrow for another awesome, awesome webinar. Thank you, everyone. See ya.